Hi, I finally got around to watching For All Mankind, a made for Apple TV uh, miniseries uh, thing from 2019. So yes, it took me a while because I don't have Apple TV or any Apple fruity gadgets. So I had to pay the fruity company uh, just to subscribe to Apple TV just so I could watch For All Mankind because I couldn't binge watch it in the uh, seven day free trial. So anyway, I've been watching For All Mankind. I'm halfway through season one and I really like it. It's The premise is absolutely fantastic. For those who don't know, the premise of this TV series is that uh, in July 1969, just before the Americans were uh, going to land on the moon with Apollo 11, the uh, Soviets actually beat them to it and they were the first people to land on the moon. So the basically the timeline, just in Back to the Future, the timeline branches and uh, the space races now where, well, the Americans are behind. The Soviets landed on the moon first and they're looking at setting up a moon base, etc., etc. And it goes through like all the stuff involved in that alternate timeline. And I really love that premise. It's really good. Um, it's actually a very well-made series. I would have preferred more actual moon stuff in it. It's very character-driven and things like that. And it, it's really quite good. But yeah, of course, being a um, uh, space buff, I would have preferred more, uh, you know, Apollo-y uh, stuff. But there's certainly enough in there to keep you very interested. Now, spoiler alert, uh, I guess... For like um, season one, if uh, you don't want to know, click away now and yeah, go and watch it. But anyway, basically NASA, to catch up uh, to the Soviets, they have to rush build this lunar base. Um, and it's called Jamestown. And this is uh, the actual lunar base that they set up. This is the first one, I guess, spoiler alert for me, I guess they expand it later. So anyway, yeah, so the Jamestown base uh, starts out, and I think in future series, like it goes into the, uh, of course, it's set in the 1970s. It's actually set on the same Apollo era uh, dates. It just follows a different uh, timeline. So basically in uh, 1974, they have set up this uh, Jamestown base, tiny little uh, base, as you saw, with a uh, three-person crew here, and I guess then the future missions, I don't know. Haven't watched these yet, but you know, like, here's all the different uh, missions and their patches and all sorts of things, right? It's really good. But anyway, I was watching uh, season one, episode seven called Hi Bob, and it's set in the Jamestown uh, base on the moon. And there's the three astronauts on there. And we've got some tech here, oscilloscope spotting. If you don't follow me on Twitter slash X, you'll know that I'm always posting these oscilloscope spotting things. Uh, like if I'm watching a movie and I spot an oscilloscope or a multimeter or something like that, I'll screen capture it and post it. And you've got to try and guess the movie and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, and this one popped up and here it is here. This is a Kikasui COS 5020 oscilloscope 20 megahertz dual channel jobby and i know this oscilloscope because yeah there you go some footage don't want to get copyright struck but i know this oscilloscope because this was my very first oscilloscope when i was a kid and i'm pretty darn sure this wasn't around in 1974 which is the date this one was set so there's a timeline uh technology error here in this oscilloscope. It should not be there, let alone be on the moon. But hey, I guess it's an alternate timeline, so anything can happen. Kikasui just, uh, you know, magically accelerated development of their oscilloscopes, and there's a COS 5020 oscilloscope in 1974, and it's on the moon. <laughs> so, yeah, nah. Yeah, nah. Yeah, so here it is here, the COS 5020. It actually comes in this older style. What's showing in the video is this older uh, style one here. I didn't have this one. I purchased mine from David Reed Electronics in the uh, city, and mine looked like this. Mine was the newer style. It's still the COS 5020. It's not the COS 5020A or B or anything. It's just the COS 5020. They just, I guess, rebranded like their look and feel of the front panel uh, decals. That's all. But yeah, basically this one, um, if, if you know the exact date it started, I mean, uh, I've had a look at like the service manual. You can get schematics and everything, by the way, in the uh, service manuals, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and it's got 1998, but it's not from then. Um, that's just when somebody scanned this thing in or, you know, did it. Um, I got mine in the 80s. So yeah, there doesn't seem to be a date code on that thing, but yeah, it definitely was not around in 1974. I can assure you that much. Could you even buy a commercial Kikasui oscilloscope in 1974? Hmm. 
a museum at the University of uh, Colombo, Sri Lanka, um, put the COS5060, which is the 60 megahertz version, I could never afford that, uh, back in the 1980s, they put that at 1985. So yeah, I do believe that is the correct 8485. So it's at least a decade after uh, the Jamestown oscilloscope in the For All Mankind. Oscilloclock.com actually handcrafted scope clocks with circle graphics. Whoa, very nice. I have to link them in down below. Check them out. So this is a Kikasui 537. So this would have been around back then or almost. Here you go. So they were producing test gear since 1951. So it's appropriate to have a Kikasui something back then, no problems. Um, it was produced in large numbers from 1975, so we're still a year later, but let's assume in that they could get, I don't know, a prototype model. Design. This is what they would have had on the moon. They would not have had the COS 5020 dual channel jobby from a decade later in the 1980s, early 1980s, no. So that is an official timeline technology continuity error and I'm not happy, but wait. That's not the only one. Same episode, 27 minutes in, and check this out, uh, they've got a video cassette recorder. Ah, which one's that? And here it is here, Sony video cassette recorder. It doesn't have a model number, but I found which one it is. It is the Sony Betamax model SLO323, and it dates from 1978. Arrgh. Wah, 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 wah. Four years after that. So yeah, there it is. It's got the VU meters um, on the uh, side of it here and two VU meters and the uh, toggle uh, switches here and the button. And you can see in a sec, this is exactly the same one. There you go, the VU meters and yeah, <laughs> I love the uh, forcep uh, clips <laughs> sticking out of it because they're trying to fix it <laughs> to watch their uh, TV shows on because they gave them a bunch of TV shows to watch while they're stuck up their board. Oh, sorry, spoiler alert. So there you have it. I just had to rant about that because I like space and I like this uh, new series I'm going to continue to watch even though I had to pay the fruity company uh, to do it. And yeah, timeline technology continuity errors. Um, not good. Thumbs down for that. But anyway, if you've seen other timeline technology continuity errors in For All Mankind or for other uh, TV series or movies, let us know in the comments down below. Catch you next time.